We're going to build a box out of slab construction. By now our slabs are ready to be constructed. They sat for a few days. I am going to choose one of these to write my name, my grade level, and the year. You can texture your slabs before building them using several tools I have. These rubber stamps can leave really cool textures. I also have these handmade clay stamps. You could even just use the tools out of your bin. This texturing step is not something you have to do, but it is something that ends up uh, making your box look really unique. You can even use a slab and cut out any shape that you want to attach to the side. I'm gonna cut out a B for my last name, clean it up a little bit. Now, I can't just take this and stick it onto the slab. Yes, it's going to stay right now, now that there's water in the clay, but once that water dries out in the kiln, it's just gonna fall right off. So we have to do something called scoring and slipping. Scoring means I'm scratching up the surface of my clay on both pieces. So wherever I wanna place this, I'm just going to lightly trace it so I know exactly where to make the score marks. Score marks, I just like to think of tiny X's. So I'm gonna put these tiny X's on both pieces of clay. The slip means I'm adding just a little bit of water and then I'm going to compress it onto the slab and clean it up a little bit. So that's scoring and slipping. I'm going to continue to texture the rest of my sides. I may have to trim my pieces every now and then. I'm now going to set them up exactly how they will be constructed. So I have one piece for the base, four walls, and a top piece. Again, anytime I am attaching one piece of clay to another, I must score and slip. That means I'm gonna put these score marks all along the base. Also, on the bottom of the walls. So think of tiny X's. Every single piece. But that's not all, because this piece of clay will stick to this piece of clay. That means I need to add score marks exactly where they are going to line up. Add a little bit of water and you can begin to compress the walls onto the base, smooth them out a little bit. You will also need to do some blending. I use my nail and I just move the clay across the seam, smooth it out. This step will take some time, so I'm just gonna speed it up. You may need to do a little bit of trimming I like to use the clay knife, make my score marks, add a little bit of water, and add the next piece. Go ahead and do my smoothing, trimming, and my last piece I need to cut down a little bit. Don't forget my score marks that last piece and now I'm really gonna take some time to blend the pieces of clay together smooth them out I may even need to go back in and fix some of my textures so carefully just pressing into the clay making sure I also have one hand on the inside of the box so it does not collapse Again, the textures, they're not necessary. They just add a little bit of uniqueness. Now there's a couple different ways you can make your lid 
One option is to put two pieces of clay, something like this, you know, two pieces right there and there. So if you place it on top, it will not move around. I'm just gonna show you guys a jigsaw lid. These are my favorite ways to make a lid. So add my score marks. What I'm gonna be doing is attaching the lid. I'm going to stuff it with paper towel so it does not collapse. Attach my lid and I'm gonna blend it and uh, blend the seam so it's one solid box. You can see a jigsaw lid means it's only going to fit one way. With a needle tool, I'm just going to carefully draw a line. I'm not actually carving through. Okay, a zigzag, a wiggly line, going all the way around from one end to the other. I will then press all the way through carefully, actually cutting through until I open it up. Now, all of these little crummies, all of those sharp little areas will be super sharp. So I'm really fast forwarding right now, but smoothing it out as much as I possibly can. Those will be sharp if you do not do that. I'm putting some plastic wrap in between. Okay, if I want a lid, I can add a lid with any extra clay, scoring slipping. And I am all done. I may have to touch up the bottom. I'm gonna store it in a bag and put it back on my tray. So maybe next class I could do any finishing touches. Moving on to slab constructed mugs. I'm gonna spend some time just cleaning up my slab. Um, before you start building, you could do any texturing, any drawing on your clay. Um, real quick, I'm just going to show you the basis of it. I would be scoring and slipping and rolling my slab to get the mug shape. However, I feel like this is just a little bit too wide. I feel like the slab is a little bit too long. So what I'm actually going to do is just chop off a little bit of it. Re-add my score marks. Okay, remember score mark to score mark just like I showed you with the boxes. And now you're gonna spend some time blending that seam together. Always keep one hand on the inside of the clay while you are blending the seam or it will collapse. And I'm just going to really fast forward here and spend a lot of time smoothing out that seam. As always, when attaching one piece of clay to another, we make score marks. I will trace so I know exactly what size base I need. Cut it out, add my score marks. I might as well flip it over now and add my name, my grade, and the date. And add a little bit of water and gently compress the clay on top. I am gonna have to spend a little bit of time here blending the two pieces of clay together. It's always a good idea to have one hand on the inside of the mug while you are doing this, so you avoid collapsing. Okay, remember I'm in super speed right now, so this is actually taking me quite some time. Sometimes you may need to use a tool to reach the bottom seam. You really wanna smooth that out. Especially if you want to drink out of it, you don't want to have anything in there that water can seep out of. You can even use a rib tool if you really want to try to get a nice smooth surface. Okay, so I'm turning and just smoothing with the tool. Keep in mind, the more you work the clay, the more fragile it will get. Especially if you add a lot of water, it will really weaken the clay. Moving on to a handle, I would roll out a slab, use the yardstick just to cut a nice straight rectangle. I would then use this as my handle, again always scoring and slipping anything we want to attach. So always score both pieces of clay. Add a little bit of water and gently compress one piece of clay to another. 
Let's spend a little bit of time blending. I know you can't see what I'm doing right now, but I'm blending the two pieces of clay together. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Okay, and then I need to attach the bottom piece of the handle. I'm just going to trim it a little bit. Figure out where I want it. Make a little mark. Add my score marks. A little bit of water and attach and blend. Now I'm just going to do some final shaping before I wrap this up. Keep in mind, the more my clay dries out, the sturdier it will be. If I keep trying to work this clay right now, it may end up collapsing. So I'm gonna set it aside for next class so I can add any more details. I'm gonna place it on a tray with my extra clay and put a plastic bag over it. I'll save it for next time. Let's get started.